Ciao Alberto, innanzitutto grazie mille per la presentazione, l'onore... Hello everyone, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to Cirque Ricardo Tormo here in Valencia in Spain. It is the opening weekend of the Ferrari Challenge uh, season for 2023. And what a venue to come to with clear blue sky, just a little bit of harmless uh, uh, high cloud. It uh, is glorious weather, glorious grid of cars ready to do battle in the uh, Ferrari Challenge Copa Shell. Uh, the mix of Copa Shell and Shell AM drivers, the Shell drivers with yellow sun strips across the top of the windscreen, the AM drivers with the black sun strips across the top of the windscreen, and what a cityscape in Valencia as well. a truly wonderful city to uh, enjoy and uh, we've got some fantastic locations for our season 2023 Misano is next then Spielberg in Austria Le Mans in support of the 24-hour race then Estoril Portugal Spa Francorchamps Belgium and Mugello Finale Mondiale in Italy uh, right at the end of October please follow us on at Ferrari races be part of the uh, Ferrari family we would love you to be part of it follow us on at Ferrari races Valencia where we are then here in uh, Spain for this uh, second race of our uh, Copa Shell drivers, which is about to get underway. As always, a 30-minute race with a rolling start for our drivers. And the weather conditions then, 27 degrees, the air temperature, track temperature is 30 degrees. And we've got uh, eight kilometers per hour of wind or thereabouts. That is the latest we have from our meteorological station, which is situated on the very grass that you're looking at right now. Copa Shell then, uh, it's Manuel Agosna going from pole position for uh, Copa Shell. And uh, for Kirk Beervold, it is uh, pole position in uh, Shell Am Drivers. I am but merely part of the presentation team because Ludovica is here as well. Good afternoon. 
Good afternoon to everyone. We are back on the track uh, here at Valencia Ricardo Tormo circuit. Everything is uh, ready for the 31st edition of Ferrari Challenge Europe, but everything is ready for the second race of uh, Trofeo Coppa Shell Ferrari Challenge. Uh, every and all the riders, uh, all the drivers are very competitive and can wait to live uh, for this uh, race. And uh, from uh, the grid, uh, I'm here with one of uh, the protagonists Agonist of uh, the race and the challenge. Uh, I'm here co with the fans, Skeltman. So, fans, hi, hi. I'm back to you. Again. <laughs> so, what do you feel uh, to be here today in this position? Uh, challenging, huh? It's uh, it's hot. So uh, yesterday I was on P4. I finished on P3. So let's try now to get uh, a little bit more in front. The ultimate is to get on uh, P1, eh, of course. But let's see how it goes. You never know. So it's challenging, especially with the weather. But we will see. And uh, what do you expect from uh, your opponents? So, yeah, this, what I expect to be on P1, of course. Uh, let's fight for it. Uh, I'm not here to be P2 or 3. I want to be P1. But let's see what's happening. Okay, thank you. Back right. to you. Thanks, Ludovica. Well done to Von Skeltemar. Where does he want to be? P1. This is one man that wants to stop him doing that, and that's Roger Grohls. But Roger Grohls is starting much further down the order than we would have expected. It's P5 for uh, Roger Grohls. Uh, Von Skeltemar going from uh, P3. As he said, he finished on the podium yesterday. Um, he'd like to go even better today. This is the 183 car of Christian Herdvieper, uh, the ML Fry driver that we are looking at right now, and he's always worth a... Uh, a um, uh, look at as well because Christian Herdvipper, although he said to me um, during lunchtime that he just hasn't felt as one with it all this weekend. Um, did some testing and uh, felt he was really, really on the pace in testing, but then it's just not all come together. This is uh, Willem van der Vorm, the Scuderia Monte Carlo driver. He's going from P7 on the grid, but going from pole position, and it's Manuela Gosner with Ludovica now. Yes, we are here with uh, Manuela Gosner. She took uh, the pole position this morning after the, the super qualification of, uh, the, of yesterday and uh, today. So let's hear from the poleman, Manuela. Hi, Manuela, congratulations. And uh, what do you expect from the, this race? Oh, it's going to be a very difficult race, like, like yesterday. Um, uh, this track is very challenging because uh, easy to make mistakes and uh, everyone is very close so oh, you lose positions with with really little mistakes so the focus is very it's very important keep the tires alive is, is key and uh, we will see at the end of the race and uh, Manuela, so I, I said uh, before you yesterday start from the second position mm -hmm. of the grid and today you are the poleman. What uh, where have been the improvements with the team of in the, after the qualifying and uh, between yesterday? Uh, well, um, after the race I know the track a little bit uh, better and I could improve my, um, my, my, my driving. So um, in the end it was a good time. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. You. Thank you, Ludovica, with Manuela Gosner then, and here is Manuela's sister, Corinna Gosner. Uh, Corinna is also a very, very talented uh, driver. Corinna is uh, uh, going from P12 on the grid, just ahead of uh, John Dillon and uh, her father, Thomas Gosner. Uh, three strong uh, grid from the Gosner family then, with Manuela uh, right at the uh, sharp end of it, going from uh, P1. So here is the uh, track in full then, 4.005 kilometers, 14 turns, nine left, and uh, five of them are right. Track named, of course, after the Spanish two-time world champion Grand Prix motorcycle racer Ricardo Tormo. It was built in 1999, and it's uh, around 25 kilometers east of the Valencia city center. Hello, my name is Roger Gowels. I'm happy to be back on track with Ferrari in Valencia with my team Reza Kroemans and I want to show you some parts of the circuit. Follow me. Here we are on the first corner on the circuit. It's about 265, 270 km per hour. And then we have the braking zone and then we go back from six to five. And then uh, when we hit the apex, we're going to full throttle to the next corner. We 
are now on the corner six, in the middle of sector two. It's a very difficult uh, sector of the circuit. Here is, uh, you can lose or you can win. And now we are at the last corner, going to the straight. Very important, high speed, braking zone, 120 meters. After that, we have a straight line. So if you don't have the speed, you will be overtake. When you have the speed, you can control. So I wish you a very nice weekend and I hope we give you a nice battle and uh, see you. Thank you so much, Roger. What a top guy he is and top driver as well. So the cityscape of Valencia, I was extolling the virtues of, and uh, you can see just a, a bit of it here in this uh, wonderful, wonderful shot. That's a nice photo. If you're thinking, where were you in that photo, Dave? I was hiding behind the podium. Sorry, uh, forgot to be there on time. Uh, right, the cars are assembled on the grid, as you can see. Now, uh, going from pole position for our uh, Copacel Am drivers, Nico is Kirk Beervold, and uh, you and I were on the air with our uh, qualifying session this morning, and um, whilst Kirk Beervold was very, very quick, he is going today from P1. Yeah, we do have some uh, grid drops of Boris Gideon and Roland Hurtner when we get the race underway in just a few moments' time. Um, they're not going to be where they qualify. The start of the race is about to get underway, and here comes the grid in full. Manuela Gosner going from P1, Axel Sardigan going from P2. They are row one. Uh, row two is von Skeltemar and Alexander Nussbaumer. On uh, row three of the grid, uh, we find Roger Grohls and uh, Peter Christensen going from P5 and P6. It's Willem van der Voorm and Christian Hurd Vipper that occupy the fourth row of the grid. Ahead of Christian Kinch and Eric Chung on uh, row five. It's Ingvar Madsen and uh, Corinna Gosner. Uh, they are on the sixth row of the grid. And then it's John Dillon and uh, Thomas Gosner. Then we get into our uh, Copacel Am drivers with Kirk Beerworld going from uh, P1 effectively. It's P15 overall with Marazzi, Marazzi alongside. Then it's Henrik Kamstrup and Paolo Scudieri, yesterday's race winner. Tommy Lindroth and Pino Frascara are on the 10th row of the grid, P19 and P20. Tarzev and Perskoya go from P21 and P22. Uh, Isazaki goes from P23. Boris Gideon expects some overtakes from him going from P24 with Roland Hurtner and Josef Schumacher on the 13th row of the grid. That is the grid in full for our uh, Ferrari Challenge Copa Shell race. Our shell drivers with yellow sun strips across the top of the windscreen. Our AM drivers with the black sun strips uh, across the top of the windscreen. Uh, here with his uh, Germanic English language which is irritating because it's better than my native English English language, Nico Spalik. Whatever. Uh, anyway, Boris Gideon and Roland Hurtner also with their Germanic uh, influence uh, are certainly going to try and influence the race uh, from their relatively lowly starting position. And just ahead of him is Motohiko Isozaki, who yesterday was on pole and also has shown a rich vein of speed. So expect those three to be kind of like a train trying to move up the order which is going to be interesting but always has the potential for something to go wrong when you've got three so quick drivers very far buried down the grid so have an eye on the front runners but also have an eye on those at the very end of the pack they're gonna come forward interesting you mentioning trains at the moment we'll leave that and park that exactly there i think <laughs> it's not the platform for that <laughs> oh Yes, he of uh, wicked puns throughout the course of this uh, race to come. The awesome Richard Mill safety car leading the cars ar around this uh, track then on their rolling start. Now, what will happen is the cars will line up in grid formation absolutely side by side. Then it will be the responsibility of Manuel Gosner and Axel Sartigan to control the pace of the uh, rolling start. 
as they head towards the uh, starting gantry, the lighting gantry, uh, where the lights will go from red to green. And uh, then it will be full chat flat into turn number one here in uh, Valencia. We're standing by for the start of Copa Shell race number two. Any loose clothing you have about your person, hold on to it now. This is going to be very exciting. Let's go racing! Fons Guzmau looking very lively indeed. So too is Axel Sardigan. It's a drag race between Axel Sardigan and Manuela Gosner. I think Axel Sardigan has just got his nose in front of Manuela Gosner, but Manuela has got the inside line and holds on to it. Axel is uh, forced to go a little bit wide. It's expected on uh, lap number one. Von Skeldemar trying to dive to the inside now. Unfortunately, he's going the wrong way in terms of trajectory as uh, all the cars make it through turn number one and turn number two. Unscathed, I think, and Manuela Gosner converts that uh, P1 into uh, the uh, race lead, as, of course, was her plan. One car off into the gravel we could see at the back there, and uh, that is the Henrik Kamstrup car. And uh, Nico, I fear that car is beached and probably isn't coming out of there, which means, you know what it means, it's probably going to be a safety car before even one lap is completed of this race. So, uh, as I was saying, everyone has, yes, yeah, sure enough, safety car is called for. So, uh, the cars will all reduce their speed. They will come under the uh, control of the Richard Mill safety car, which has barely had time to switch the engine off following the uh, formation lap, and it's called for again because of the stricken Henrik Kamstrup car. Did you see what happened, Nico? Because I didn't. Not quite. I mean, certainly for Henrik Kamstrup, who had a DNF yesterday um, after a collision with Izozaki, as you can see, there is a little bit of a um, What's going on confusion. Here? Yeah, I think some people uh, overtook, maybe under the safety car, and are returning those positions. OK, um, fair enough. But in uh, Shell M, I mean, it's all over the place. Paolo Scudieri is leading. Boris Gideon, who was way down the order, is now P3. Kirk Berwald, who was pole position, is behind him, P4. I mean, anything and everything happened there. And I hope that with the luxury of the safety car, that, that we wished for it, but that will give us time to pick out what exactly happened, uh, especially down the order. Not that much happening at the very front with Manuel Agostino and Axel Sarting and Alexander Nussbaum are coming forward to P3 as we've completed the first lap and are no longer at race speed. John Dillon looks like he didn't start the race. Henry Kempstrup, unfortunately, we lost. Anything can happen in Ferrari Challenge and most things will. Yes, uh, you can see uh, there's Andrea Fausti then on the uh, pit wall there and lots and lots of people uh, looking at and uh, deciphering uh, data and we've only had a lap, well not even a lap before the safe, safety car was called for. There you can see to the left hand side of that picture the stricken Henrik Kamstrup car. We're riding on board with Paolo Scudieri who of course won yesterday in Cove Shell Am. And uh, for Manuela Gosner, uh, fair play. It was a good start for her. Um, I thought at one point Manuela, uh, Franz Engsler had got his nose just in front of Manuela Gosner, but um, she uh, held on to it uh, nicely. Axel Sardigan, I meant to say, not to forgive me, put the names in a muddle, but uh, Axel Sardigan certainly had uh, just got his nose in front, but Manuela Gosner was absolutely steadfast and determined to uh, hold on to that uh, P1 position. Now, the safety car period is under investigation. That means that there are some drivers out of place. Here's the start once again in replay. Initially, a very good launch from Font Skeltemar, look. Uh, he was right on the uh, gearbox of uh, Manuela Ghost. Now, this is where you can see that uh, Sardigan had just got his nose in front. Surreal, Von Skeltemar's partner looking on as well. Uh, avoiding action there from uh, Sardigan. And uh, Henrik Kamstrup, I'm uh, trying to look at to see how he gets uh, caught out potentially and ends up in the gravel. There is his car, so he's still running going into turn number three, Nico. Ah, and cold tyres, look, he just, he just kissed the apex of the turn, uh, was on the grass. That unsettled the back end of the car and he went round. Absolutely no one else involved, Nico. Thank you to our guys in the OB truck for giving us the replay of that start. Let's see it from on board with uh, Paolo Scudieri right now. 
Oh, my goodness me, didn't he cut through the pack? Well, that was a door left open, and he didn't need a second invitation, that's for sure. I'm not quite sure. I mean, that certainly was a three positions, four positions gained in, a in the matter of a couple of meters. As you say, um, if, you're, if you're offered that invitation, you're not going to refuse it, are you? No, absolutely not. That's Scudieri, certainly the Viley driver who is able to take that. They're um, going past the camp strip car. And I mean, still lots of reshuffling in the Shell Ams, not, not all of which we could make out from that shot. But five minutes already gone of the race distance as we're behind the safety car. Now, I don't think it's going to be a long time for the Henrik Hamstrup car to be recovered. The uh, recovery teams here at uh, Valencia working very, very efficiently indeed. The order as we understand it, oh, there's no question that it's Manuel Agosna, Axel Sardinger, Alexander Nussbaum are up to P3. But in terms of the AM drivers, Nico, it's Paolo Scudieri, Stefano Marazzi and Boris Gideon, which means Paolo Scudieri and Boris Gideon have really, really done very, very well in the space of about half a lap. And the safety car is going to come in at the conclusion of this lap, as you can see on screen right now. So the lights will go out on the uh, safety car, which will indicate to Manuel Agosna. We're going to go back to racing at the end of this lap. So it will be uh, Manuel Agosna who is allowed to back the cars up, Nico. And when she decides to give it 100% on the loud pedal, she decides and anyone else has just got to try and anticipate when she's going to give it full throttle. Indeed. The only thing she can't do is accelerate and then decelerate, then decelerate. again. Yep. That's the only rule, basically. Um, other than that, the Richard Mill safety car will peel off into the pit lane and then we will be back racing and we will be watching the timing screen for any potential penalties, but we will mostly watch what happens when the lights go back green behind Manuela Gostna. Here we go then around turn number 14. And here the cars come then for the second of the Copa Shell races and the second start of race number two as we've had a safety car intervention. And all the cars, I love that camera. You get the real speed of these wonderful Ferrari Challenge cars heading down in towards uh, turn number one. Manuel Agosna got it all nailed perfectly. Axel Sardigan, is he going to bide his time or is he going to go for it early on in terms of trying to make that P2, P1? Mm. Let's see. Alexander Nussbaumer, of course, with a phenomenal start. He finds himself in P3, and he's going to be pushing Axel Sardigan. So Sardigan is going to be in this invidious position of hunting and being hunted at the same time. It's a good start, too, from Christian Kinch. Big shout-out to Christian Kinch, back racing in the Ferrari Challenge, and it is very welcome indeed. So it is uh, Gosner from Sardigan from Nussbaumer uh, for the AMS. It is Scudieri from uh, Gideon from Marazzi. That's the way it looks at the moment. Here's Thomas Gosner with an inter-family battle with his daughter, Corinna, who... Um, oh, we have got some drive-through penalties coming up, Nico, including for uh, car number 161, uh, which is Thomas Gosner for overtaking under the safety car and also for... Paolo Scudieri for overtaking under the safety car. Yeah, and it's always ominous when you find yourself under such a intransparent situation higher up the order than you were previously. You always fear as a fan that maybe one of those overtakes may have been once the yellow flag or the yellow indication was out. And yesterday's winner, Paolo Scudieri, now on the wrong side of the stewards and race controls uh, eyes and very, very unfortunate. Um, as we put the first full lap of racing into the books, um, let's go down to pit lane and Ludovica. Here in the, the box of uh, Alexander Nausbamer with uh, his uh, team manager. Manuel, Alexander today have a good start and he overcome your opponents. How is he doing? No, at the moment, like you said, he had a very good start at the moment, running on P3. So normally he should be really strong uh, as long as the race went on. But unfortunately, we had to directly in lap one the safety car. But hopefully, I hope we have now a clean and green race. OK, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Well done, Manuel Reuter then. Uh, he knows a thing or two about racing, does that man? Uh, and uh, he, of course, is responsible for Alexander Nussbaumer for the uh, uh, Gomes Scuderia GT team. And uh, Von Skeltemar running in P4, then it is Peter Christensen, who is uh, running in uh, P5 at the moment, ahead of Christian Herdvieper, and then Roger Grohls, who's in P7, which is a lowly position for Roger Grohls, it has to be said. So, uh, two drive-through penalties uh, for Thomas Gosner and also for uh, Paolo Scudieri, which 
for the moment uh, that would elevate Boris Gideon into the uh, race lead uh, with uh, Stefano Marazzi and Kirk Beervold P2 and P3 in the Shell Am drivers as you can see from the uh, order on the left hand side of your screen so Manuela Gosner controlling the pace of this really rather well Axel Sardigan now going to try and get a slingshot Alexander Nussbaum although he's going to try and do the same and where it's difficult if you like for the likes of Axel Sardigan he wants to try and overtake Manuel Agosta, but what he doesn't want to do is leave himself vulnerable to Alexander Nussbaumer, who in turn is vulnerable from von Skeltemar. But the inside line in turn number one, you've got to be so confident in the grip afforded to you. And I'll tell you what, Fons was, is and does, because he uh, moves up. Here comes Nussbaumer to try and fight back here. And Peter Christensen is just waiting to pick up the, uh, to pick up the pieces between those two. Should anything go awry between them? Axel Sardingen is uh, lining up Manuela Gosner as well for the lead of the Copa Shell race. So this is hotting up really rather nicely, just as those Pirellis get up to race temperature, I would suggest, Nico. Yeah, definitely. And Axel Sardingen will be told by his team that, you know, von Skeltema is coming behind him and the shark is uh, showing his teeth. And that means Axel Sardin will have an extra motivation to get by Manuela Gosner and get out of the fangs of the Dutch rocket coming up behind him. But that's all good in terms of motivation. However, Manuela Gosner will not wave him past and she had a really, really good pace in qualifying. So Axel Sardin has his work cut out for him. Uh, Paulo Scuderi hasn't come into pit lane. That means he's still leading the race on oh, track. Oh, 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 Nico, forgive me with all those uh, really rather ridiculous noises. Uh, but I just happened to see Corinna Gosner beached in the gravel. Now, if Corinna can't get the car out of there, you know what that means. And Thomas with avoiding action. Corinna then into the gravel now. Let's just watch here if uh, she spins the rear wheel. Sadly, we didn't see. I think that that car is stuck there, Nico. And uh, unfortunately, um, that means that uh, probably that's going to be stuck, which means potentially another safety car or maybe wave double yellows. Incidentally, that very car stuck in the gravel is getting a uh, track limits penalty of five seconds. It weren't for that incident, I'm sure. No, and it's a kind of academic now, um, but uh, there we are. And Thomas Gostner also now uh, dropping down the order. That, of course, is due to his drive-through penalty. Pleasingly, we are hearing that uh, the uh, Corinna Gostner car has managed to uh, pull itself out of the gravel. So well done to Corinna for that, uh, which means that the race is not going to be interrupted. So uh, that's really, really good news. Meantime, Corinna's sister, Manuela, really is under pressure uh, from Axel Sardigan, who in turn is under pressure from uh, von Skeltemar. Uh, so there is lots going on here. Sardingen for the moment is marginally closer to Manuela than Skeltemar is to Sardingen. As uh, car number 173, you can see there getting that uh, time penalty that I mentioned, and that is for track limits infringements. So there's a three-way fight going on for the lead of this Copa Shell race between Manuela Gosner, Axel Sardingen and von Skeltemar. Who is it going to be? Well, we've got 17 and a half minutes of racing to come. And uh, is Engstler, sorry, is Sardigan just biding his time here? Or is he doing everything he possibly can? Uh, von Skeltemar, is he going to allow those two to fight and do the work for him and uh, allow him just to take the uh, opportunities? Oh, no. Axel Sardigan is pushing and pushing hard. He tries a completely different line through turn number 14 to Manuela. Does that give him a little bit of extra momentum? Uh, heading down the start finish straight. I'm not sure. Manuela looks to have pace on the uh, straight. She's got pace all the way around the circuit, to be honest. All the cars screaming past our uh, wall cam there, showing you just how fast these Ferrari Challenge cars are. Manuela Gosner not being phased by Axel Sardigan behind, that is for sure. Not really bowing to the pressure. Uh, Boris Gideon leading Stefano Marazzi and Kirk Beervold, the one, two, three in the uh, um, drivers. We had lunch with uh, Boris Gideon, Nico, and uh, well, what a good showing in the one, zero, three car. Yeah, definitely. As um, Paulo Scuderi has taken his drive through penalty, which means the order in the Ams is now uh, cleared of any uh, impending penalties, and that means Boris Gideon is leading virtually and really on the track. Stefano Marazzi, Kirk Berwald, those are the top three. Josef Schumacher, P4. 
I know, up 11 places. And Boris Gideon, look, up 12 places. The progress chart on the left-hand side of the screen. Remarkable. Absolutely. And Motohiko Isozaki, who took a little longer to move up the order, but he's now also up into P6 and uh, has just done the fastest lap in class. So he is showing his uh, progress. Now we've got a time penalty for car one, oh. three, six. Alexander Nussbaumer is on the back of this battle, Nico. I was going about to say it's a four-way fight here. But that tells us that Alexander Nussbaumer, he went off the track at turn number one and has got a time penalty for that. Um, that kind of really takes him out of this battle, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, Manuel Reuter, it's going to be interesting, would be interesting at least, what they are telling him from uh, his pit perch, how to approach that strategy. Uh, Corinna Gosner, who already had that spin and the t five second penalty, is now giving a drive through penalty for track limits. Well, wow, lots of things happening with race just hitting half distance. Nussbaumer, well, Manuel Reuter hasn't said anything to Nussbaumer because he's pushing as hard as ever, isn't he? Um, and so too, if I may say, is Axel Sardigan and Manuela Gosner and Axel Sardigan have broken away from these two a little bit. Uh, so Manuela Gosner leading from Axel Sardigan, then is von Skeltemar and Alexander Nussbaumer. And uh, Christian Herdvieper. There is uh, von Skeltemar in the uh, shark's teeth. Uh, 177 car, Manuela Gosner P1, doing a very good job for CDP MP racing at the moment with. As Nico quite rightly said, uh, half distance in terms of this uh, Ferrari Challenge Cup shell race. Last and best lap comparison is what's on screen for you right now. You can see last laps and the best laps, and they're all in the 140s every single one of those times. Absolutely, and just to underscore how competitive this series is, someone like Roger Groves is really, really one that we uh, think is going to be a challenger in the championship. Is only down in P7, Willem van der Waal P8, and it's only very, very small margins and fractions that uh, make a difference. And uh, Manuela Gosto really is keeping it together, but one small mistake at Axel Sartingen would be going through. But the same applies for Axel Sartingen, von Skeltema and everybody behind them. I want to give a big shout out to Christian Kinch, who's quietly going about his job, but he's up to uh, P6 and he's chasing down uh, Christian Herdvipper and Christian Kinch returning to the uh, Ferrari Challenge and doing a very, very good job indeed. As he sets his last lap, I think he was faster than anyone you just pointed out to me. And there you can see Corinna Gosner, uh, a backmarking car now. Manuela is um, through and uh, Axel Sardingham remains P2. Then it is von Skeltema, Alexander Nussbaumer. Here is Ludovica once again. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Anouk, uh, the team uh, Kessel. Anouk, uh, um, Skeltema is pushing very hard uh, today, and he is fighting with Nussbaumer. How is going? Well, let's say the end of the race. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's pushing, he's doing his job, and uh, let's, let's hope that he will keep going like the end of the race. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, von Skeltemar absolutely is pushing. He's not quite on Axel Sardigan. And I think what von Skeltemar is concentrating on, actually, is uh, defending from Alexander Nussbaumer, who has got a uh, time penalty to be served anyway, which would uh, be applied at the end of the uh, at the end of the race, of course. Uh, Josef Schumacher, you just saw into the uh, picture there. Very good showing from Josef Schumacher up to P5. And uh, Manuela Gosner. And uh, Axel Sardingen, then absolutely nothing between them in terms of lap times, Nico. And you can see Sardingen is uh, constantly using slightly different lines. Part of that will be to try and get a slingshot. Also, part of it will be to make sure that uh, Manuela Gosner's rearview mirrors are full of the all red car uh, that he's right behind. He's hoping just to break her concentration, if only for a millisecond. That would be enough. But he's a firm but fair racer, Nico. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he said yesterday in the interview, he is not here to take part, he's here to win. But, you know, he wouldn't ever want to win at all costs. And that means he's going to try everything he can, everything that's in the book, but he wouldn't step over that line. And Manuela Gosner is not going to give him uh, the favor of making a mistake. At least she certainly doesn't try. There is Alexander Nussbaumer. Forget about five second time penalty. I want to still go by and come by Fons Skeltema. And Fons, he has to look into the rear view mirror and that means he can't attack Axel Sartingen. So it's all a very interesting dynamic here in Shell. And the same is to be said about the Shell Ams with Boris Gideon, Stefano Marazzi and Kirk Burwald occupying the top three. Roland Hurtner, meanwhile, has come up all the way to P4 and is threatening for that podium position. Amazing, absolutely amazing. 
So 11 minutes of the uh, race remains. This is the uh, Copa Shell race. From the opening weekend of the Ferrari Challenge, uh, we're live from uh, Valencia. Delighted that you've uh, joined us. Uh, the opening event of our season for 2023, where Manuel Agosna is leading the race, having set the uh, good position P1, pole position for Manuela. She's held on to the lead of this race, despite a continued pressure from Axel Sardigan. Sardigan not able to find a way by in uh, much the same way. Alexander Nussbaumer has not found a way by the Sharks teeth fronted von Skeldemar, but is continuing to try. And here is Sardigan once again. You, you see there, Nico, the really different line he takes through turn number 14, but it, it pays no dividends, truthfully. Well, he may try and just be a little bit more smooth, and that may pay dividends towards the end of the race in yeah. terms of tyre preservation. We will find out. We've got two thirds of the race done in about five seconds time so basically now and uh, that means towards the end of the race tire degradation therefore track limits might be an issue there is roger Grohl's being he, pressured by willem van der Waal. who was set just set the fastest lap willem van der Waal. yeah absolutely and uh, there was a uh, attack from christian kinch on christian hurt Vieper, who has been warned about track limits as well both of them actually have and that just shows you there are battles all across front and center this grid of Copper Shell and Copper Shell M cars. So, what can Willem van der Vorm do about Roger Grohls, who is ahead? Uh, Roger Grohls running in P7, Willem van der Vorm, Scuderia Monte Carlo running in uh, P8. So, uh, there is Willem van der Vorm. There is Christian Kinch then, as Nico said. He's really pressuring Christian Herdvieper, but Christian not able and certainly not going to invite him through. Another lovely onboard shot of Roger Grohls then, as uh, you can see just how close. Willem van der Boom gets without actually uh, uh, kissing the uh, back end of the uh, Roger Grohl's 4 day Challenge Evo car. Uh, love some of these onboard shots, Nico. They see, you see the whole race from a completely different perspective, don't you? And how hard these drivers have to work inside of those cars, which this race, Manuela Gosner is just eking out a bit of a lead now over Axel Sardigan. It's up to four and a half tenths, which is the biggest the gap has been. Uh, for the uh, duration of the race thus far, of which there is eight and a half minutes remaining. So for now, Roger Grohls is able to hold on to that uh, P7 place, despite Willem van der Vorm. Willem van der Vorm really pushing. Now someone has gone round in turn 14. It's Christian Kinch, who is doing such a good job. Keep your foot in, Christian. Please keep your foot in. You'll get the car out. And uh, Corinna Gosner uh, also going down on one of the service roads as well. And Sartigan now, there was me saying that uh, Mamala Gosner has built up the biggest margin that she has had. And I think, Nico, you're right. I think the tyre deg on the Manuela Gosner car is a little bit more severe than that of Axel Sardingen. Well, in fairness, Manuela just got just did her best lap on the last lap, but uh, Axel Sardingen unfazed did an even better lap and did the fastest lap of the race. And, you know, this means certainly what you said. Axel Sardingen is biding his time and now it's time to attack. Less than 10 minutes remaining. He has preserved his tires the best he could. And now he is going to hunt and try to wrestle that p1 away from manuel agosta and you can see how he's attacking the curbs how he's attacking the apexes and trying to get on terms with manuel agosta he can't do that forever but right now he's going for it you've got to bide your time and then when you do decide you're going to go for it you're going to be absolutely totally committed to it and i think sardigan is uh, there is a time penalty uh, going to Christian Herdvipper, which will advantage Roger Grohls. There you can see it on screen. Five-second time penalty as Axel Sardigan. Now there's some back-marking cars that may come in to uh, play into this battle as well. And uh, there you can see all the cars getting past. Uh, good, good driving there from... Uh, I think that was uh, the car of... Uh, Louis Perascoia, who was keeping well out of the way, and well done, Louis. Great driving. Uh, von Skeltemar, uh, he's still under continued pressure from Alexander Nussbaumer and goes around, but he carries too much speed. He's wide. Von Skeltemar, very cool, calm, and collected, was just able to maintain his line, knowing that he would be able to uh, retake that position with no trouble at all. And Alexander Nussbaumer, at the back end of the car, stepping out now as he's pushing so, so very hard. Uh, the gap between Gosner and Sardigan is uh, five tenths when last we uh, crossed a sector line. And there is von Skeltemar trying to hold on to that P3 position from Alexander Nussbaumer, 
who we do know has got a time penalty uh, to be awarded. And Christian Herdvipper, incidentally, who's running in P5, he's also going to get a uh, time penalty. And Christian Herdvipper, I'm now being told, has got a drive-through penalty, Nico. So, Nico. so that really has ruined the race for him. Yeah, definitely. Track limits, and that's where tyre deck is really, really dangerous. Once sure. you really, really, the tyres go off, you really run the risk of running very, very quickly into more and more penalties. There is Christian Kinch. Oh, and there is, on the right-hand side, I think that is Boris Gidlin. It is, it is. And uh, while those other cars, uh, Kinch um, is not in his class, obviously you don't want to clatter into them, and that was really, really close. Yeah, that was, uh, I think that was the uh, 199 car of uh, Ingvar Madsen uh, that just made contact with uh, Boris Gideon. And uh, there you can see the 107 car of uh, Stefano Marazzi, who, of course, was chasing Boris Gideon down. And now, unfortunately for him, he's got Ingvar Madsen right in his way. Exactly. So he splits the top two in the AMs. And uh, with five minutes remaining, that might just be the difference. Uh, keeping Boris Gideon uh, clean from any attacks from Mat Marazzi. Roland Herdman, meanwhile, has dispatched of Kirk Berwa. That means from very down the grid, he is now on a podium position. Um, great, great progression for him as well. So lots of things happening in the AMS as Christian Hurtweeper is taking his drive-through penalty, which removes him from the picture of our top five. We're still Manuel Agosna reigns supreme. Axel Sarting and Fons Geltemar, Alexander Nussbaumer, Roger Grohls, Willem van der Boom, Peter Christensen, Eric Chung, and Christian Kinch are top six, seven, eight, nine in Shell. And there is Willem van der Boom on the inside of Roger Grohls. So Willem van der Boom then continuing his uh, chase on Roger Grohls. And tell you what, Axel Sardingen has not given up on this with Manuel Agosta yet, but I just I have a feeling that maybe his best opportunity is gone now. Uh, he'd got the tyres in an optimum position where he could probably try and do something. However, he'll drive the rims off that thing in his quest to try and get by Manuela Costa. And, of course, Manuela is having to nurse a car now, which is not affording her the same level of grip that it did earlier on in the race. That's obvious, isn't it? And Willem van der Boom has got by Roger Grohls. As we can see, the day glow yellow and blue colour scheme on the 4 day Challenge Evo of Willem van der Boom. He's up to uh, uh, P5. And, incidentally, Willem's... Uh, Willem's wife is not so well this weekend, so she's not here in the paddock, so uh, get well soon, and we look forward to seeing you in uh, Misano. Absolutely, yeah, and Manuela Gosner, if, if Axel Zardingen goes by, it will be commentator curse, and she will come and find you for that. No, but you the, have said it. Well, for the moment, Manuela Gosner is <laughs> P1, Axel Zardingen P2, and... You know, von Skeltemann, now he's been released from Axel Nussbaumer's pressure. He has closed the gap back to Axel Sarting. And so that dynamic certainly not over and settled either. Boris Gideon still got Ingvar Madsen as cushion to Stefano Marazzi. Roland hurt the 1.1 second behind Marazzi for P2. So two minutes, 50 seconds. Where will that overtake come from? It's going to come somewhere. Where will it be? Well, it's going to be an attempt. It's going to be an attempt, that's for sure. Um, and there you can see Manuel Agosta and, uh, well, Axel Sardigan. They have been effectively welded together for jolly near all of the race. It's been brilliant driving from both of them, if I'm honest with you. And Von Skeltemar is beginning to push them as well because Fons knows that if the fight between the two of them intensifies, there is just an opportunity that he could take advantage and uh, go through and uh, get something. Um, so, you can see there a drive-through penalty for car number 173. That's uh, Corinna Gosner. Manuela Gosner, her sister, meantime, is doing a very good job leading this race. We've got just two minutes of the race remaining. So, Manuela Gosner, Axel Sartigan, Von Skeltemar, Alexander Nussbaumer. Uh, they head down the start finish straight for what will be starting the uh, penultimate lap, if uh, our calculations are correct. So the uh, remainder of this lap, plus one more before this uh, Cobra Shell race will be decided. The tension on the uh, pit wall, there is Stefano Guy. There is Manuela Gosner's uh, driver coach, Giorgio Senagiotto. Uh, just probably trying to say to Manuela, just keep cool, keep cool, keep cool. I have to say, she is a cool customer. And uh, she has driven really, really well, Nico. Not really put a wheel wrong. And uh, Axel Sardigan also being a firm but fair driver. 
Uh, you know, he's had some goes at overtaking, but, you know, it is difficult here on this very technical circuit. You said earlier on he's not prepared to, to um, go outside of the book in terms of his uh, overtaking uh, opportunity. And he's, uh, I think his best chances have gone. Yeah, and you have to respect Axel Sargent. He only started racing relatively late in life, but he is really, really... Um, taken up that fair driving oh. style and respectful driving style the moment that he picked up a racing car wheel and you know we've never seen him make any other moves other than fair ones um, and uh, you can see some traffic ahead of the Manuela Gosner car so that might be the one perilous thing oh as Nussbaumer again looks to the inside of von Skeltemar here's Manuela Gosner turn 14 awaits and uh, you run downhill here, Axel Sardigan uh, right on, Alexander Nussbaumer right on von Skeltemar. So they will uh, cross the timing line to start the uh, final lap, I think. Or have they crossed the timing line? No, it is the uh, final lap. Well, backmarking cars, as you suggested, Nico, may play into this. And Roland Hurtner is getting a five-second penalty, and that means his P1, P3 is currently gone. That means a podium for Kirk Berwald provisionally as Manuel Agostro and Axel Sarting get past the traffic. Everybody very good, fair, respectful driving, and Manuel Agostro, now it's down to her. Traffic, backmarking traffic, dispatched. Now she can focus just on what's ahead of her, but there is Alexander Nussbaumer on the inside of... Von Skeltemar. Well, Von Skeltemar is uh, fighting back here, and he kept his cool as they go past the uh, back number, uh, back marking one, three, four car. Uh, Von Skeltemar and Alexander Nussbaum are on the final lap. This is the real battle that's going on for uh, P3 at the moment. The uh, Emil Fry driver of Mutlu uh, Tasep was one of the drivers. Pino Frascaro is in there as well. Uh, great driving in terms of keeping out of the way of those that are fighting uh, further up the order. And uh, Von Skeltemar and Manuel Gosner, who've been under enormous pressure from their respective uh, attackers, uh, predators, if you will, of um, Axel Sardigan and Alexander Nussbaumer. They've uh, seen it off, have they? Well, they're about to approach the uh, final, final turn. Axel Sardigan is going to be a drag race all the way, and Alexander Nussbaumer, with a final frantic effort, runs himself so wide that he's never going to be able to get on terms as von Skeltemar crosses the line, but Manuela Gosner takes the win from Axel Sardigan, von Skeltemar P3, Alexander Nussbaumer. Well, of course, he crossed the line P4, but uh, he loses out because he had a time penalty, which elevates Willem van der Boom to P4. For the AM drivers, it's going to be Boris Gideon. For Autohaus Ulrich, he will rub his hands with invisible soap. He likes that expression I use. Well done, Boris, he wins. Ahead of Stefano Marazzi and uh, Roland Hurtner on the line uh, takes P3. However, it's going to be Kirk Beervolt, who you correctly suggested, Nico, that will be elevated into P3. I am going for a lie down. Goodbye. Uh -huh. You're stealing that sentence from me. Motohiko Isazaki also passed Roland Hurtner, so also from a lowly position all the way up to P4. Great driving from our Japanese contestant. Wow, Manuela Gosner, I mean... <laughs> I think for the next two weeks and a half, she will be looking wherever she goes. She will be looking behind her and expecting Axel Sartingen to be there because, I mean, wow. I mean, talk about stalking. Uh, <laughs> Axel Sartingen was there. He wasn't stalking you. He was very visible. Um, but he was there. And Boris Gideon, he, with a fantastic drive, did most of the hard work at the first lap, to be honest. I agree, um, I agree. But he held it together. Manuela Gosner had to fight all the way to the line, but she did it. She held on, and that's her first win here in the Ferrari Challenge 2023. Axel Sartingen denied perfect po points haul. He did get the fastest lap, but he didn't get the race win today. He'll still be our championship leader exiting Valencia and going to Spielberg, but He's been beaten today. Von Skeltema P3, great driving. Willem van der Waal P4. <sighs> have you done your lie down? Because I need one. Yeah, no, you go and have yours now. 
Uh, here's confirmation then of the result overall. Uh, Mamola Gosner taking the win from Axel Sardigan and Von Skeltmar. Then it was Philip van der Vorm, Alexander Nussbaumer, Roger Grohls, Peter Christensen, Christian Kinch, Eric Chung. Best of the AM drivers, Boris Gideon, P10 overall, but P1 in uh, the Copa Shell AM race. Uh, ahead of uh, Ingvar Madsen, who was uh, uh, <coughs> next in the order. And then it was Stefano Moranzi and Kirk Beervold. Motohiko Isasaki, Roland Hertner, Josef Schumacher, Thomas Gerstner, Paolo Scudieri, Christian Hurt Vipa, Tommy Lindroth. Uh, ahead of Pino Frascaro, Mudlo Tazev, Louis Perescoya, and then Corinna Gerstner, Henrik Kamstrup, and John Dillon. My goodness me. Manuela Gosner is out of the car and is thrilled. Lovely to hear some of the uh, celebrations. Encouraged to the uh, top of the car. Well done, Manu. Gentleman that is Giorgio Sonagiotto uh, welcomes Manuela back down to earth, <laughs> having taken that, uh, having taken that uh, win. Well, out gets Axel Sartigan. Disconnects. Uh, Von Skeltmar. Stefano Marazzi. All of these drivers in different stages of uh, celebration, Nico. Yeah, but united in celebration. It was a great yes. race. They delivered some magnificent racing. And here are the results. Top three in class. Copper Shell, Copper Shell M, Gostner, Sarting and Skeltema, Boris Gideon, Stefano Marazzi and Kirk Berwald. I mean, really, really good, close, competitive and fair racing. And... Uh, a great show and you can experience that and much more at at ferrari races um, on social media well, well what a race let's enjoy the pitch show right now Manuela, congratulations, what a race. Yeah. You start uh, in, uh, in the front and you maintain the position even the last lap. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very difficult for me. But I was, uh, I did no track limits, no mistakes. And I could uh, defend when it was necessary, so pace was not too bad. And uh, no, it was a good race, I'm happy, so. And Axel Santinger was a very competitive uh, competitor and, op and opposer, and uh, so especially in the last lap uh, for you. Ah, yes, I know Axel very well. We have a lot of fights al already last year, so we are very used to fight together, and I know he will never, um, never give up and push until uh, the last lap. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Grazie mille. Thank you. Ti chiedo un'ultima cosa se vuoi fare un saluto a tutti i tifosi italiani che ti seguono. Ciao ragazzi, grazie del tifo, grazie del vostro sostegno. Vi mando un super bacio. Abbiamo vinto oggi, sono felicissima. So, uh, grazie. There, Manu is uh, uh, saying hello and uh, thank you to her legions of Italian fans. We of course will be hearing from our uh, Cup Shell Am winner, Boris Gideon. Uh, that coming up, the uh, driver of the uh, 103 car. Fantastic job done by uh, Boris Gideon. Wonderful done to uh, Boris. And 
And whether it was having lunch with me that uh, uh, gave him the uh, benefit of that, uh, I'm not sure. So uh, we can see that Boris is going to talk to uh, Ludovica. Boris, congratulations for the results. For you, this is a special start to the season. It is indeed. It's a special two days. Uh, two times I started on pole position. Yesterday was very unfortunate. Today also a little bit unfortunate because I had to start from the back. So I'm even more happy and very, very lucky uh, to uh, drive to uh, P1 at the end. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was fantastic. Uh, car was fantastic. Coach I have was uh, super helpful. And I'm very grateful uh, for this race. Thank you. Thank you. Well done to uh, Boris Gideon then, and uh, well done to Ludovica. Let's take a look at the highlights now. Then from that race, take a look at the right-hand side. Copachel Am best progress. Boris Gideon up 14 places. Fastest laps came from Axel Sardigan and Motohiko Isosaki, neither of whom were race winners today, just proving the fastest laps can come from somewhere else in the, uh, in the uh, pack. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a really, really entertaining and fascinating race that we witnessed. And uh, we'll go back to the podium and honor those who made it to the top three in each class. We will be heading to the podium next. So two podiums, of course, one for the Shell drivers, one for the Shell Am drivers to come. And, uh, brings to a conclusion our uh, race weekend here in Valencia. Von Skeltemar heading to uh, step number three for Kessel Racing. Axel Sardingham will be heading to step two. He, he'll go away from here and think he's had a reasonable weekend, a race win and P2. And then on the top step of the podium, Manuela Gosna. It'll be a popular victory for uh, Manuela and for her legions of fans everywhere. And uh, celebrated and congratulated by her opposing drivers. And uh, she says she has really good battles with Axel and Fons. And here's the national anthem. As the anthem plays out, then it's time for uh, trophy presentations to come. And delighted that Antonello Coletta is here, the head of GT Sporting Activities. And uh, there he makes the trophy presentation to uh, Fon Skeltemar. Next up, it will be the uh, trophy presentation to Axel Sartigan. Antonello Coletta, of course, responsible for the, um, the all new hypercar in amongst all the uh, GT sporting activities that he's responsible for, of which the Ferrari Challenge is indeed one of them. 
And uh, Mama Lagosna receives her trophy from him as Thomas and uh, Corinna and also Giorgio look on. And all together on the top step of the uh, podium for the uh, photographs. Bellissima photo. And uh, let's take a look at the cars that propelled those drivers to their podium places for Kessel Racing from Skeltomar's Shark's Teeth took him to P3. For Luex Sportivo and Herta Racing, Axel Sardigan, P2. And for CDP MP Racing, Manuela Gosner, P1. In terms of drivers' championship points, uh, Axel Sartigan leaves Valencia, leading the championship by one point over Manuel Agosna. Von Skeltemar is P3, Peter Christensen P4, then it's Roger Grohls, Willem van der Vorm, Alexander Nussbaumer, Christian Hurd, Vipa, Christian Kinch, and Corinna Gosner. That's the way the points look. Uh, ahead of Eric Chong, Ingvar Matson, Joachim Olander, John Dillon, and Thomas Gosner. So Sartigan will be happy. He'd have liked to have had a bigger points cushion than just one point, but uh, action will resume in Mazzano, of course. We are standing by for the AM podium. There's Kirk Beervold uh, making his way to step number three. Step number two will be occupied by Stefano Marazzi. And Boris Gideon will be on the top step of the podium. And here then, once again, as baseball caps are removed, comes the national anthem. So the anthem plays out. This time for the uh, trophies to be presented. Uh, Gonzalo Goba, then the uh, circuit uh, director of uh, Ricardo Tormo uh, Circuit, makes the uh, trophy presentations on this occasion. Uh, first of all, of course, to uh, Kirk Beervold, then to Stefano Marazzi, and then to Boris Gideon. There we go. All the uh, Shell Am trophies uh, presented. And Motohiko Isasaki down there watching the uh, podium. So they'll all get together on the uh, top step of the uh, podium for the uh, photographs for the world's media that pays their attention to the uh, Ferrari Challenge uh, Copa Shell. And the cars that uh, delivered the drivers their podium positions for Kessel Racing, Kirk Beervold, B3. For Rosso Corsa, Stefano Marazzi, P2. And for Auto House Ulrich, Boris Gideon. Race winner, P1. Championship standings in uh, the uh, Cup Shell Am Drivers' Championship. Kirk Beervold, 22 points, leads ahead of Roland Hertner and Boris Gideon. And then it's Paolo Scudieri, Stefano Marazzi, Motohiko Isasaki, Tommy Lindroth, Pino Frascaro, Josef Schumacher, Mutlo, Tazev. Then it's Louis Perasquia and Henrik Kamstrup. So there we have it then, our racing done from Ferrari Challenge Copa Shell here in uh, Valencia. We will be heading off to Misano next, which is some uh, 1,700. Uh, as near as makes no difference, kilometers between here and Misano. We look forward to seeing you there. From myself, from Nico, and also from Ludovica, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.